Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. It's the Ghost Girl Diaries podcast. As always, your host, uh, Crystal to the Leandra. And uh, today um, we're going to be doing a chat about past lives, paranormal experiences. I don't know. It's going to be Kat and I. We always take this in like different directions. I feel like we always have fun when we're um, doing chats because you never know which direction we're going to flow with things. Um, yeah, paranormal podcast for those of you brave enough to join the circle. I just threw my phone on the floor. Uh, so I'm going to bring Kat in now. <laughs> Where is Kat? Hello. Hey, I had to get my How's phone. You know what I'm saying? How's your phone? <laughs> it's fine. I just decided to throw it. You know what I mean? I was okay, like, it's just, yeah, I've been there before. Uh, so. Let's chat for a second about my leg because I feel like everybody's asking about my leg because I'm not dying because everyone thinks I'm dying. I mean, I might be overly dramatic and think I'm dying too, you know. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> no, so okay, everyone's getting confused. Okay, so I got I got the ligament thing. I got the ligament issue going on. Yes, that's true. Uh that was also unplanned for the record. <laughs> Kat, how often do I trip and fall when we're together, like, constantly? A lot. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Even if I'm wearing flat shoes, I'm the kind that just, like, trips and falls over myself. And um, I went to the doctor because I've been doing I've been doing this ongoing, like, treatment on my legs, which I'll talk about that briefly in a minute. But um, thought I had, like, an issue with, like, the last procedure I had done. Went into the doctor, and the doctor was like, no, actually, you have – two torn ligaments in your foot and I was like I'm sorry come again what <laughs> just Ow. make, just make it worse like as if I wasn't dealing with something else you know let's just add another thing on top of it so yeah some people are like wait a second so you had you had a torn ligament and your foot even Shaylee texted me this morning she's like wait I'm confused is it the same foot like <laughs> I think even we're all confused, okay? Oh, I'm expected, very you know? confused. Well, and we are planning on inevitably shooting a pilot. We're going to be on the road soon. Um, and so I have to heal everything. <laughs> Literally. I'll just look at the phone call I got from Crystal after the she got the notification about the ligament. It was just like dead silence for like a solid minute. Like like she was on the other line. I'm like, hello. And she's like, yeah. Um, I was just really so disappointed in my life. Ligament for like two months. No, they think it was like, longer. They think it was like three or four longer? months. I've been walking around. But oh. well, so when you tear a ligament, it's probably I probably like rolled my ankle or something. Which frick and frick, I do that all the time. Like I'm not shocked by it. You know, no. like my platform platform shoes are like freaking four to six inches you know so it's not shocking but um uh so yeah my doctor was like did you fall I'm like probably I don't know but then what happened was I let it go for so long and no, once again not knowing I had a torn ligament because I had a procedure done on that foot ankle area I thought it was just you know wouldn't you have thought it was connected Kat I mean I would have I would have 100 percent and then I let it go. It, I walked around with a torn ligament and I tore another ligament. <laughs> basically. <laughs> so, and here, uh, we are. and here we are. So anyway, um, I had to, the actual procedure was done. So the torn ligament is on my right foot. The procedure I had done yesterday is on my left thigh, groin thigh, which is even better. I just love that area. It's very, actually, I'm like extremely ticklish. So when the doctor, yeah, I, I can feel it. You know, I just laugh the whole time. So, um, I have a vein. Um, my, my grandmother had varicose veins. A couple of years ago, I, I, want, I don't want to go into a lot of detail on this. I just want to tell people because people are worried about me, which I appreciate you guys, but I promise I'm fine. Uh, my grandma had varicose veins. I thought I got varicose veins because I was a hairstylist for so many years and standing on your feet. Like, they warn you, you're going to get varicose veins. So a couple of years ago, I started a process of trying to get rid of some of them. Uh, I had a botched procedure done, so I had to go in and see a surgeon. But it kind of worked out in the end because although it was a botched thing that I had done, 
um, I, I got a really good doctor who ended up finding out I had some other issues going on that I didn't know about something called DVT or deep vein thrombosis. And um, basically that's what was causing all of my issues. And if we didn't take care of it while I was young, it was going to end up causing me to have like a heart attack or a stroke when I got older, which my family all has cardio issues. My grandmother had a stroke. So honestly, it was like it worked itself out. You know what I mean? Like as much as I don't want to do, you know, who wants to go in for random procedures, but it's, they're necessary. So yeah, I had some complications yesterday in the in the surgery, and um, it was an outpatient surgery, so I wasn't there overnight. But I had some complications. It should have taken about 45 minutes, and it ended up taking three hours. Um, long story short, was <laughs> the uh, the staff inside of my uh, my surgery surgery room. So I had my doctor, and then he had like several staff members, like nurses and uh, medical assistants. They chose to play music while the procedure was going on. I didn't. I don't care. Whatever floats your boat. And they they chose uh, they chose house music slash techno music. <laughs> like why you do want to do why you want to do surgery so to techno? I don't know. So um, basically, what happened was they. It, I must have been vibing. You know what I mean? I must have been vibing with the techno music. And, <laughs> and the, you know, I wasn't fully put under, but I they could not get my, like, blood pressure and veins to calm down because I was like... I kept saying, like, I feel like I'm at a rave. So they had to shut the music off, and it took literally hours for my, like, blood pressure to come back. I guess it's probably not good to play, play that kind of music while you're having a procedure done. You know what I mean? Like, it does probably make your anxiety go up a little. House music is, like, hard. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, my doctor was so upset. He was, like, so mad at his staff. So anyway, that's what happened. I'm fine. I'm going to do a more in-depth video on it on YouTube. I haven't done it yet just because I'm still going through the process of it, and I didn't want to, you know, give out half information. But, yeah, so that's where we're at. But I'm fine. I'm alive. Just, you know, it is what it is. So. Yeah, being preventative is good. Yeah, I mean, if that's the only thing that I can – get across to everybody is just please be preventative with your health like you know I, I am young I don't want to go through this the reason I'm actually starting these procedures is I I'm obsessed with shoes ask cat like my whole closet is just I love purses and shoes that's my life and my my favorite thing is like knee boots or like thigh high boots and I haven't been able to wear them because it's it's causing pain in my legs and I'm like oh nay okay I need my shoes back so that's really why we're doing this so today we wanted to talk about Atlantis, but I feel like we need to go a little bit further than Atlantis. It's like a past life stream, like, cause Kat feels like she was connected to Egypt. Um, and then I ended up getting this message on Instagram from a fan. And uh, basically she said something to, along the lines that, um, you know, she's like starting her spiritual awakening process or whatever. And she kind of wanted to know the steps or like the how to or how we got through that. And you know, she says she feels like she's a, she's developing abilities and she's having a spiritual awakening and like do you I think journaling is a good idea. She just love to hear more information on it. I feel like we could tie that in. So with past lives, I'm gonna say and I'm gonna let Kat like chime in when she's ready. Mm -hmm. I I know it sounds weird, but like I feel like even when I was a kid, I just knew I've lived more than one life. Does that has that that's how you felt too, isn't it? It was exactly how I felt. Very old soul vibes, but um, I felt the same way. Because with ancient Egypt, I started studying Egypt when I was 10. And I was writing hieroglyphics at age 11. Jesus, Lord. So, yeah, I definitely vibe with that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little further than me, okay? Like, with the Atlantis stuff, I was obsessed with mermaids from the get-go. So, like, my favorite Disney movie was The Little Mermaid. Um, and it had nothing to do with, like, the princess being saved and, like, exchanging her soul to the witch. It all had to do with being underwater and the sea castles and, and the mermaid thing. I just vibed with it and I got it. So at a very young age, I started collecting not only um, crystals, because my mother named me Crystal, which is strange, too. But I also started collecting unicorns and mermaids. I was obsessed with it from, like, the age of three. And, and it was so strange, because although I told my mom I drowned in a past life... With the same thing, I also said, like, I'm obsessed with water. So it made no sense. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so same, same. I vibed with, like, I just, it, it's something, like, I just, it was. It, it is, and I just accept it, and, like, there's no questions on it. 
And I even remember, like, my cousins and stuff being like, oh, Crystal's, like, so weird. Yeah. Like, wh- how would your family feel when you were doing the whole Egypt thing? They're probably like, what's wrong with you, Kat? Like, why are you so obsessed with it? Yeah, they thought it was strange because um, my aunt was a flight attendant at the time. And I remember, you know, being so immersed in ancient Egyptian culture and, like, learning so much about it, watching it on National Geographic and all of that. And... Um, my aunt took me on a day trip to Chicago to go to the museum there to visit the Tutankhamun exhibit. And like, I came back home with like novels of, that I still have. Um, and I came home with it and my parents were like, you're gonna read this? Like you're, like you're 12, <laughs> like mm-hmm. what are you doing? Yeah, so it's very strange. And I feel like the further you go down your spiritual path and with that being so like just a part of our lives, it grows even more, you know, mm-hmm. you get like answers as to why you were having those feelings or those, um, you know, connections with past lives. It is, it can be anything too, like anything that you vibe with. Like I also, I mean, I think I've had a lot of past lives, but another thing I vibe with is, which I think you've said this too, the 1800s, the big dresses and all of the layers and oh, yes. um, the feminine part of just being girly and like the really, the ruffles and the, the lace, it's just, it's, I feel like I've worn those dresses before. Me too, like the colonial Victorian times. And mm-hmm. and it's so strange how full circle things can be compared to our past life because those were the homes that I grew up in in this life. So very just interesting correlation. It, it always ends up coming full circle eventually. So, Well, and so going back to this question that I had from the fan in, in, in my Instagram DMs, okay, is like, did I have a spiritual awakening as I got older? I don't mm-hmm. think so. I mean, I think slowly over time, like, the more you divulge into, like, the paranormal and the other side, like, it all slowly starts to sort of unfold like a like a flower. But I can say that, like, I've always been strange. <laughs> I was always into, like, literally from the minute I was born, I was always into it. Like, Kat may not have had so many paranormal experiences growing up like I did, but she was always vibing with just, like, knowing of the other side. And, like, you still are, like, obsessed with Egypt. Like, you want to go there someday. Like, you're still, like, you know you love, like, all of the glyphs and all that stuff. Yeah. I, um, there are even some Instagram pages that I follow of ancient Egypt and learning about the culture. There's an archaeologist I love. His name is Professor Zahi Hawass. And he's doing an excavation right now. And I hope that they do a documentary on it because it's incredible. But sometimes I see photos of uh, some of these lost cities in ancient Egypt and feel it feels familiar. It's like a familiar vibe. Like I've been there. I'm feeling a longing. There's a word for it. I can't remember the word for it. Like that longing of being in a place that you've never been to, but you feel like you have. But it's like home. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like home. So with e- with the Egypt thing, and you and I, we've talked about this before, so I know how you feel about it. I also have the same opinion as you. How do you feel when you see excavators, archaeologists, which I mean, I, it's amazing that we need to learn about past cultures because we're talking about ancient cultures that a lot of people don't know things about. So they go in, they, they find these mysterious cities all over Egypt, but then they excavate the mummies and then they start opening the tombs. How do you feel about that? Uh, if, if it was, if you are connected from a past life there? Yeah, it's mixed feelings because I do love the history aspect of it and I find it really fascinating. But, you know, those tombs are sealed for a reason. And death in those times, in ancient Egyptian times, were, was sacred. Um, they had full rituals, ceremonies, making sure that when you crossed over, you know, you were ready to go with food preparations and, you know, any items you would need for your journey to the afterlife. So seeing some of these, you know, archaeologists and Egyptologists take the mummies out of the tomb really kind of rubs me the wrong way a little bit, Um, mainly because like they're there to rest, lay them to rest, leave them there. Mm -hmm. Or if you're going to be opening the exhibit or opening the tomb, at least just leave them there, you know, maybe putting in casing over them, but leave them where they've been put. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, you think about the Tutankhamun, um, Howard Carter incident and how they had that whole curse of the mummy when they took mm-hmm. Tutankhamun out of the tomb. I feel like that should have been a sign from the get go. Well, no, I mean, that like was- the mummy, the one. movie is actually based on something that really happened, essentially, is that they opened some tombs and they feel like they were hexed or cursed from opening them. But I do, I do, I agree. I mean, I, on one side, it's hard because you understand the scientific uh, historical purposes behind it, that they're mm-hmm. wanting to, like, learn about the culture or the society of, you know, thousands of years ago when they existed. But then on the other side, you're like, 
you're like literally why are you viewing this dead body that's like should just go back to earth and it's crispy you know what i mean <laughs> really crispy okay mm -hmm. sometimes it just like has tons of re resin on it and you can't even get to the mummy so what was the point mm -hmm. and I well and in the process you've destroyed the tomb now and yep you've you've opened it mm -hmm. it was sealed tight for a reason mm -hmm. you know for that to be their home and um it's also really interesting too because in ancient egypt especially they documented everything mm -hmm. everything on walls floors side streets any alley you would go through in ancient egypt was just covered in hieroglyphics so i feel like if you're really wanting to learn about the history about something why don't you just read the hieroglyphics instead of digging out a dead body out of the tomb mm -hmm. you know what i mean like you can really get to know some of these people or these pharaohs or priests that have their own tombs you get you get to know about their whole life based off of image depictions and hieroglyphics written in their tomb so I really don't see it as like an excuse to have to take them out of the tomb, but that's just me. That's I agree. Just no, I agree. Well, and I mean, yeah. realistically, we're okay. We're seeing how the, the human has been mummified, like literally, because mummies are associated with Egypt and that's how they did yeah. things. But how are you going to, what are you really going to see? It's been thousands of years that they've been mummified. You know, like, I don't know what it can really tell you. You're right. Yeah. It's been documented. Now, I do want to just warn everybody that the cat and I are probably going to go down a lot of rabbit holes in this discussion. And there's reasons for it. And it's because Kat has researched the shit out of Egypt and I have researched the shit out of Atlantis. And we yeah. both have some really strong opinions. We've both watched a lot of documentaries um, and we have both, you know, believe we've had past lives in these locations. And um, some of this stuff is gonna get a little bit out there for some people. And I, I don't mean to get you, get weird on anybody, okay? I'm not talking necessarily, con I mean, you could say it was conspiracy theories, but understand that any of the, um, a lot of information that has been found with Egypt has been said, it's been tracked or connected with alien life. Like that's a fact, that's not a conspiracy. So if that stuff creeps you out or something, like don't don't be here during this conversation. But um, you know, I, you know, my opinion on it is is that uh, you're talking past lives. Like yes, I think I've lived a few lives on this planet in particular. In my opinion, I think this planet is very very new compared to the rest of existence of what's out there. And I think that uh, really only the strong souls are sort of sent here because it's still in development, you know? Like if there are UFOs that are flying all over, the Pentagon is confirming it, we're seeing it on video footage across YouTube and everywhere else, we are way behind in our civilization. We don't have that kind of uh, power to have our own UFOs be driving into another universe. So in my opinion is, it, it, Earth is very young. It's a baby place to be. And I do think if you look at not only <clears throat> not only um, Atlantis, Lemuria, or uh, what was the other, Egypt, but also the Mayan temples, right? The Mayan temples in Mexico were also known to be have connections to alien life, and they were built similar to the pyramids. In fact, there's the second largest pyramid, I believe, is in one of the Mayan temples in Mexico, or. Mm -hmm. Central America. It might be just Central America. I'm not as familiar with the Mayan temples. Kat and I have only really researched where we believe that we're from. But yeah. what, so you have a really interesting theory on <clears throat> the pyramids in Egypt. I do. And the theory came from you researching a lot, watching a lot of documentaries. And you sent me these links. I watched these documentaries. And I was like, you're freaking right on this theory. So tell people what you think your theory is on why and how these um, pyramids were built the way they are. So it's very interesting because it can go really complex as anything would be when you're talking about extraterrestrials and ancient history. But right off of the bat, what got me interested in going down the rabbit hole was the illustrations that the ancient Egyptians wrote on the inside walls of the pyramids, especially um, the Great Pyramid at Giza, which is the, the giant pyramid that you see all over everywhere. You know, you look at it and you just know that's Giza. And um, there are actual depictions of the tip of the pyramid being almost kind of like a satellite for extraterrestrial life. And the ancient Egyptians, um, through what they've been able to find through um, tablets, stone tablets, um, or clay tablets and stone tablets, actually, they have found some. Um, 
they figured out how to work with energy. And I mean, like, literally using water as a conduct conductant of energy to fuel stuff going on inside of the pyramid. Which are water is so, what we know as electromagnetic fields, which also powers paranormal. So therefore, I'm not shocked by this fact. Yeah, it's pretty wild, too, because you can't really see it much now because it's so old. But older photos, if you look back in history of the Pyramid of Giza, the very top pointed part is a different form of rock. Um, it's a completely different form. And I, I believe, in my opinion, that that was used as a part of the water that they were using inside of the pyramid to use as a conductant of energy um to do God charging it up it with someone. yeah <clears throat> and um of course all of the pyramids were also built perfectly in line with certain constellations and certain stars and when you go even deeper into it go deeper down the dark rabbit hole they're actually in perfectly in line with certain um solar systems mm -hmm. like other solar systems mm -hmm. and it's just so mind-boggling how um you know knowledgeable these people were not having modern day technology so it just makes you wonder like who gave them that information and they had that. to have but help at some point to do it they had to have had some help because that's some pretty in-depth information now the reason why the water conversation and them um using it inside the giza is so plausible is because it's actually been found through egyptologists that there is um almost like a black black it looks like on the inside of some of these canals towards the top of the pyramid where water would be constantly flowing so essentially what would happen is there would be a canal of water and so it'd have a tunnel where the water would funnel through then you would have this giant gap in the middle section of the pyramid and it would lead to the top and create a, a source of energy and pressure on the top and some do say that the tip of it could move off or shift in a different way um, in order to invite whatever there. Contact now, the extraterrestrials, also, who knows, right? It's true. And some rituals were actually, um, you know, used there to talk to their gods. Um, so, you know, very special ceremonies would be done at some of these pyramids. And, you know, it just raises a lot of questions. Like, why would you have a tunnel full of water and then nothing literally in the center of the pyramid and then leading up to the top? a full contraption of, you know, other things, other minerals, other different types of rocks, um, and what would it be used for? Now, so, I do want to pause for one second because I'm fascinated by this. When you're talking about gods and goddesses or, or possibly priest, priest, uh, priesthood that you follow in that time, we're not talking about, like, the source of God. What they believe at that time was who they worshipped were extraterrestrials. So the gods and goddesses were extraterrestrials. And that kind of goes into some Greek lore as well, because I've Atlantis is kind of connected to the Greek god and goddesses as well. That's where I've researched my stuff. Um, and so, like, if you're talking about uh, King Triton of the ocean, or, or well, that's the sun. Um, so that what was the king? Uh, king of atlantis that they said that was in the oh, water um, ariel's father is in yes no triton is ariel's father that's the son zeus zeus Zeus. so yes. zeus uh, you know a lot of people when you're talking about zeus or you've learned the theory of zeus you're like oh so he was like half man half fish in the water not necessarily they, they worship these gods and goddesses as uh, interdimensional beings that would come down from different locations and that's how they would contact them through the pyramids. Lumeria obviously is, Lumeria and Atlantis would use crystals predominantly for contact um, and compasses they were like more on the mathematical side. Egypt and Atlantis were said to work hand in hand together um, I have some interesting theories on that as well but I want to make it clear that when you talk god and goddesses it's not a figure of speech or, or a being that exists like in like a higher realm of heavens. They considered the gods and goddesses to be interdimensional being aliens that would come down that they would contact for help. Yeah. Praying to the so, beings to come help. I don't know if I ever told you this, <clears throat> but there were actually major um, findings of ancient Egyptians being really fascinated with 
water, mm -hmm. obviously. You think about the Pyramid of Giza and how they are possibly using that as a major form of energy to connect or contact somebody. But they had all constant rituals with the Nile River. Mm -hmm. And um, there would always be some form or body of water near palaces for... Um, the Nile the was like a big location that. for palaces and everything because that, that gave them not only water, but it also gave them... Um, food resources, vegetation yeah. resources. So yes, the Nile, and obviously at the time, I don't think the Nile was as big as it is now. It's not, definitely not. But the interesting correspondence is the main reason why it links with Atlantis, I believe, and with ancient Egyptian. Is this history. the library? Is that where you're going? This is, no, this is something else. Okay, I'm okay. This. So the li let's talk about the library too, because that's connected to the Nile. Yes. I know. Oh, I'm so excited. I love these rabbits. <laughs> I love these holes. Like, we chanted about this for like hours. Um, but there's an ancient Egyptian god called Sobek, mm -hmm. also called Sebek, however you pronounce it in your language. Um, and he is a crocodile god. And he it lives in the afterlife. So he is the person that will weigh your heart next to a feather. And if it's too heavy, then he will eat your heart and you will be damned forever. Mm -hmm. um, and they really advocated for that god because he was the bringer of truth you couldn't get past him you could you could lie to the first person you spoke to but then when you go down these trials Sobek is the god that you meet in your second trial and crocodiles were and still are really prominent in the nile mm -hmm. so that was also used um, as a form of blessing and offering to Sobek so they would worship the nile waters because of all the crocodiles that lived in there because they believed that he was part of the afterlife you think of the ground and water and underneath everything the earth they believed he lived in the nile <laughs> so very interesting well it's know. almost like the same th how i feel about shadow people or or uh, crawlers I kind of think of it as like maybe uh, they had to worship the crocodiles because they thought they would go report back to Sobek, right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. oh, we have to do good because if we go to the afterlife, he could damn us forever. So we have to pay tribute to the crocs in the river. Um, now, with the Nile, because let's tangent on that for a minute. So yeah. a lot of people <clears throat> ask, you know, like, okay, why... If Atlantis existed, Lumeria, all of these places, why is there no proof of it? The only proof we really have is Egypt, and even that, there's they're missing a lot of files. So I have uh, I've watched so many documentaries on Atlantis, and I'm talking not like fake documentaries. This is like um, archaeologists that paleontologists literally dig up dinosaur bones. Like they're doing everything. They're going out. They're looking looking um, at the grounds to see what's going on and why it is the way it is. So they have discovered through tablets once again through Egypt that the the oldest form library that existence at that time was a library by the Nile River and it literally had everything and Plato even speaks of this Socrates speaks of this that they had I think that they went once or twice to this place okay um, but it's it's been found in tablets but what ended up happening was okay everyone's like well where's all of the information on on Lumeria where's the information on Atlantis and and where's the rest of the stuff on Egypt? The Nile River swallowed the library. And it probably shouldn't have been there. However, at that time, once again, Kat's talking about worshipping the gods and goddesses. Worshipping Sobek, making sure that we're not going to be taken into the afterlife and be damned. So they probably built the library there on a spiritual presence saying it will be safe here, it will be guarded. But not also thinking, okay, well, the Nile River is going to get larger. There's going to be mud involved, mudslides, and it's going to take the whole building out and, and remove it, which is inevitably what happened. Because when you're talking about a library at that time, we're talking about inscription on, on actual stone, like sc stone inscription. We're not talking about pages in a book. I mean, there could have been some, but I don't think that had even been inv in, uh, invented yet. It may have been bark by tree, so, you know, things inscribed. But it's all disappeared basically into the Nile. So that's where everyone's like, where is Atlantis? How do you find Atlantis? Um, and it's so much deeper than that. I So tangenting on Atlantis. Yes. <clears throat> I, as much as I'm obsessed with the mermaid thing and all that stuff, I never really believed that Atlantis was underwater. Um, I believed that it was islands, the, the way they portray Atlantis to be. 
So some people say that it was by Greece, some people say it was south of Spain, some people say it was like sort of off the coast of, um, I guess that would be East, uh, West Africa. Nobody really knew at the time though, because you know, we're not talking, the if they are praying to the gods and goddesses, which are interdimensional beings, they're the only ones able to confirm or deny where the location is so no one really knows so mm -hmm. i i found this amazing documentary on gaia that i watched g-a-i-a -A. if you don't have gaia you need to just suck it up i think there's like a 30-day trial period but like there's just amazing documentaries on there amazing. so these people went and they wanted to like actually find atlantis <clears throat> so they they referenced back to things like from socrates and like greek uh, greek times roman times and uh, they, they were able to pinpoint a location. Now, at the time, it wasn't underwater. It was islands that were basically in the form of circles off of the uh, west coast of Africa. So they went, they wanted to fly an airplane in and see if they could find where those exact markings are. So at this point, it is now basically considered part of the Sahara Desert. But what they believe happened at the time was it was sand and it was obviously partial sand above water. There was probably some sort of a tsunami that occurred. It washed out all of the islands and then it went underwater and then a tsunami probably happened again or maybe an earthquake, maybe a volcano, who knows. And now what we know of as, uh, you know, this the Western Sahara Desert is basically where Atlantis was located. So <clears throat> they took another private private plane into the exact no location of Atlantis. I mean, I, I don't even know why this documentary didn't blow up bigger than it was because they have the, the map of what Atlantis would have looked like. They go into this location. It's very secluded, by the way. I mean, they were brave to even fly in there. Now, we're talking West Africa. We're, we're talking uh, a, a civilization that's there that's... Um, I would say second to third world country, unfortunately, just because of location. They don't have uh, the architectural, you know, advancement that we do in, in Western culture. They don't have the money that we do in Western culture. So they, they have set up tents, which are very makeshift, floaty, flyby tents. And they have been collecting artifacts from this area of what they considered Atlantis. Um, they also took a drone in. They got drone footage of the area. Um, and it is spitting image to what Plato and Socrates uh, basically wrote down for dimensions and location. Um, and another thing, Atlantis was known for having um, prestige horses, prestige elephants for some reason. They, they believed um, elephants in their ivory, they didn't kill them. They were like very good luck for Atlanteans. And they went into this area where they found Atlantis and there is elephant tusks. I mean, old, obviously old, old everywhere. So that was where they died, you know what I mean? So it's amazing. So um, on the Atlantis side, you know, they were really into crystals, spirituality. They did a lot of stuff with the universe, with the stars. I feel like they kind of were like the post-modernization of taking um, what the Greeks did, like Socrates and Plato, and, and actually implementing it and creating structure of like looking at the sky and uh, being able to tell like the sun, the moon, astrology. Atlanteans were like on the real, real spiritual side of... Um, just embolizing, uh, creating that persona of who you are from your birth record and then following that path of what, what your birth record said that you should be. So it was very, very interesting. Kat has another theory on uh, Loch Ness Monster. You think Loch Ness Monster may have been uh, somehow connected to Atlantis and it, and it got lost and it might be one of the only surviving uh, creatures left from Atlantis. Do you want to talk about that? I'm 100% convinced. Um, and I, I think I believe that because of a couple of things. One thing is um, you think about Atlantis and folks saying that, you know, well, where's the proof or where's the evidence? And, you know, Atlanteans, I feel, would be really cryptic anyway, especially if they were a wealth of knowledge and power and they didn't trust people with that. Um, they probably wouldn't have slapped it on a, a wall and, and left it there for people to read. So. They were very crafty, I believe, in how they wanted to portray their information. So it's no shock to me that you would have Loch Ness that nobody can seem to really find or maybe blends in with their surroundings um, because it is the last remaining aspect of Atlantis. Mm -hmm. I do believe that 100%.
and he sort of got washed away at sea, found a safe haven, and, and you think he kind of can just blend in, camouflage with his environment. And, I do. And he's probably, if he's Atlantean, even related in some how, shape or form, they're very intelligent beings. So even when people are out hunting for him, he knows, and he just camouflages out. Yeah. It's kind of sad. It I, is. Honestly, a little sad. Poor guy floating out there, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> just floating on out there um yeah i'm i'm obsessed with the atlantis stuff so another like there's weird things that i i'm like you where i'll not necessarily with atlantis because we can't I, I have seen depictions of it and there are certain depictions that i'll look at it and be like that's so familiar like i feel like i've been there like that's the most accurate thing that i've seen or i know but then yeah. there's other ones where i'm just like mm, i think like you know people have taken it and ran with it a little bit do I believe mermaids exist? Maybe. And once again, if you're talking about the gods and goddesses section of it, of like the interdimensional beings coming down and like they're worshiping like mermaids, yes. I've seen, you know, when they sh they when they show the like washed up dead mermaids all over the United or you know world on YouTube, I don't believe it. I'm gonna be honest, I don't believe it. I also think same thing at Loch Ness. If they do exist or if there is a, a colony of them somewhere, I think they'd be able to outsmart humans just because that's what the civilization was known for doing. Yeah. Um, so I don't think they'd wash or the like evil mermaids that come up with fangs and they're going to eat you. Like, come on. Do you think they care about humans? I don't think so. You know what I'm I saying? I have an interesting theory about that, though. Okay. I have an interesting theory about that. But going back to Loch Ness just really quickly, I think it would be a really interesting experiment for you to go and visit the area that Loch Ness has been sighted. Mm hmm see what the energy feels like there i'd love to your past life in atlantis well and another thing too is like it's so weird like just once again i'm spurting off into like different directions so i hope you guys don't <laughs> care because this is what cat and i do but um another thing that really reminded me of um atlantis first of all my natural hair color is black as you guys know like black like i'm my native american genes are strong you know what i'm saying like i go stand in the sun for five minutes and i am tanner like you wouldn't recognize me with my dark skin and my dark hair if, if that's how i looked all the time um but i'm scared of sun cancer skin cancer you know what i'm saying so we're just gonna stay oh. pale and gothic it's fine what was that <laughs> was that your side that was someone in here whoa uh, did you hear that you hear that no one's in here that was like a loud, it sounded like someone like shut your door. I know. Is someone in here? It was so loud. <laughs> was okay. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Uh, and I changed my ethernet cord today. I swear to God, there won't be any ghosts up in here. Okay. Because it's a new ethernet cord. I don't even want to hear it. Oh, um, <laughs> literally <laughs> plugged into the modem. I don't want to hear it. Um, that was really loud though, wasn't it? Jesus. It was Wicked loud. <laughs> okay. I, I, I was like, normally I hear the, the handle shake and that I didn't even, it was like, we're coming in. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got a little, got a little startled. So talking about things that remind me of Atlantis, like Kat said, there's certain things she just sees or even on TV with the documentaries and she's like, that's Atlantis. Um, something that reminds me of Atlantis is my blonde hair. And I do feel like everyone that lived in Atlantis was very pale with blonde hair men and women and and something that reminded me so much of it was the colony from game of thrones that um uh what's her, what's the princess's name targaryen uh, targaryen or is that uh, the other one Daenerys. Daenerys. yeah that i was like oh my god that's atlantis like straight up like and it, it makes you wonder when people create these worlds in film it's like they remember from past lives and that's the image that they're creating. So when I saw that, I was like, oh, my God, so Atlantis. Like, it just screams Atlantis to me. Um, yeah. There was something else, too, that was, like, very Atlantis to me. I can't remember. There's a lot of things in World of Warcraft that make me think of Atlantis. And I think that that's why I like to play that game so much, is it's not just like, oh, everybody likes to, you know, play video games, escape reality. But it's because there's, like, some literally predominant places in there that remind me of, of Atlantis. Yeah. Yeah, it's wild. I mean, it all stems from something, mm -hmm. you know, movies and shows and things like that. Mm -hmm. And my theory on mermaids, if you don't mind me hopping there for a minute, yeah. is it's really interesting because I loved Disney growing up as a kid, but I had only known about the horror show um, Mermaids before mm -hmm. seeing 
The Little Mermaid, like mm-hmm. seeing Ariel. So it was really foreign to me as a kid to watch The Little Mermaid because I have only I had only heard stories of them having the fangs and like you know killing everybody and all of that. Mm-hmm. And thinking about it now and the stuff that Atlantis went through and and everyone just disappearing. If there are any mermaids, it would not surprise me if they were pissed off. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't surprise me at all. If they saw a human civilization or if they saw a human um, and immediately was on, like, triggered. Because Mm -hmm. I can't imagine what that must have felt like. I don't think it's necessarily, like, the fangs, you know, or, like, the, you know, the creepy vibe that they do. But I would definitely think that they would be on high alert. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, high alert and mad. And well, I, I think that like, everything in the ocean is connected to Atlantis. So that's like orcas, dolphins, especially. Like, think about how, like, even killer whales, they, they yeah. like, keep them in captivity, and I don't agree with it at all. Mm-hmm. And they kill their trainers. It's like, yeah, because you're keeping them in a fishbowl. It's like a thousand pound, a few thousand pound animal, and you're he's in a fishbowl. They are smart beings. They're not supposed to be there. Um, and yeah. look at seals. They call them the dogs of the ocean. Cause I'm, so I think they're all connected. Um, I had a couple of... Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go into a lot of detail of this. Okay. <laughs> but I was having like a serious spiritual awakening. You can't really predict when they happen. I think that your spirit guides and your spirit team on the other side is there helping you. And like when they know you're ready for a level up, they're going to take you through it. And I'm just going to say last August, last September of 2020, like I was going through it. Okay. It was rough. Um, but obviously I don't think that they would give you anything you can't handle, but I had a lot of like, uh, I swear they were astral projections where I was with like orcas, killer whales, gray whales, seals. I told you about that cat. And I was, oh yeah. Remember, I was, like, I re- remember there was the, why are you, why are you dreaming about seal or orcas? Oh, yeah. And I was like, I don't know. And they're like, stop. And I was like, I can't, I don't know. Like literally, I don't know. I remember that they're like whales above you. Yeah, was like, it was like in the oh sky. It was like in the sky when it was mm-hmm. happening. And yeah, and that. when those are so vivid, I feel like it's not just a dream. It's like an astral projection. And when you're like waking up, you're like, no, that was like legit. So I mean, when you're talking about that, like I think they're we don't know even what's in the ocean is like 90% of it's undiscovered or something like that 80% whatever. And I think those beings are also from different different. I think every creature can incarnate on this planet uh, to live a life. I think there's different that's why I think like when people talk about aliens, they talk about the little grays or like the little green alien that society's created. It's just a shame because it's like your the fear that's been instilled in people when I think that like all the planets have been created by alien or for aliens by aliens. It's I think the universe is connected. It's not just the planet. I mean, is that how I you feel? feel like I'm hearing music right now. On Can my you side? Hear that? No. It straight up sounds like flutes. Well, you know Atlantis was known for like music, musicality. I am shook right now because I thought there might have been someone outside and there's no one out there. And I thought it was my phone. I can't hear it on my I side. Know, that's wild. That's wild. Yeah, it's just flutes. Still? Yep. Still hmm. going. Just in the right ear. So it's coming from my side. That's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting, Kat. That's all you're going to say. Lock Ness, you hear? <laughs> Okay. Well, and you you had an you had an astral projection dream too of like you thought you saw Loch Ness and you thought it was connected to me in some way with crystals. I did. I I actually saw Loch Ness, um, and he, I say he, and I think I told you he as well, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, is really like wounded, mm-hmm. and, and I don't mean like on his body wounded, but it was very murky water. I remembered it vividly. Like I was in the water with him Mm -hmm. and nothing was being said, but it was almost like you think in the movies, like that sonar or like, you know, in dolphins, how they say like dolphins will communicate with you type, that type of energy. And he had um, very, very dark and like murky green skin, like your typical scaly skin. And he had um, what almost looked like, um, what is that word? Like barnacles all over his body. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking at him in the eyes and he was just broken. Sad, alone. Mm -hmm. And it was so sad because Mm -hmm. I remembered in the dream just being like, what's like, what can I do? Like what's going on? And nothing. He was just floating around aimlessly. And I, I just think that is so sad. 
That it must be like the creatures that can just live for years and years and years and they like never die. You know what I mean? Like the under, cause there's even uh, those great Greenland sharks they found that are hundreds and hundreds of years old. So yeah. it must be something similar. I think that it's definitely outsmarts it. Yeah. I think it makes me sad because I, I cannot imagine aimlessly searching and searching and searching mm -hmm. and not being able to get any response back. Like that is just sad. Well, and you also told me you think that if I go to Loch Ness, is that Scotland uh, or Ireland? Ireland? I, Which... uh, I don't remember, to be totally honest with you. I should look it up. Anyway, it up. if we go there, you say you think we're going to get evidence if I go there. I, I think you're going to get evidence with you there, mm -hmm. 100%. And I think it's going to be an energy thing where there's going to be a shift mm -hmm. and i would not be shocked it's scotland scotland um and it would i would not be shocked if something happens mm -hmm. i would not be shocked mm -hmm. yep i do remember in the dream though it was around like twilight time um that i was in the water because i remember peeking out and looking at the sky and it was like black and like gray tones with mm -hmm. the stars shining so i'm wondering if maybe that might be a precursor into like that's the ideal time to try to communicate or to mm -hmm. be out there. With well, probably because he's probably yeah. humans have tried to hunt it for years, so I wouldn't doubt it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Atlantis. Um, let's go back. Or you want to? You want to go back into um, Egypt? Which one do you want to talk about? Oh my gosh! Which? Oh gosh! I'm curious about the correspondence between Egypt and Atlantis working together, because. I am convinced that they had to have had help with the higher civilization. Oh, I know they Whether did. Whether the extraterrestrial, extraterrestrial, I can't talk, or um, Atlantis. Mm -hmm. But Atlanteans could have been extraterrestrial. I think they partially were. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I um, I I wonder if my drowning incident from why I'm so afraid of water on this planet is from being on Atlantis when it went under when it went underwater. Yeah. Um, to this day, I have not been on a ship or a boat ever. Um, I can swim. I've been in swim lessons. I can swim. I can jump in the deep end in a pool. Um, but it's something about, uh, and I mean, I've been in the ocean. I've been to the ocean. I've been in the ocean. I've just never been in a boat or a ship. Um, right. There's just something about that fear that I'm just like, mm, I don't know. I don't think it would happen again. Honestly, I really don't. But uh, I think it's just like big. The soon, You know what scares me is natural disasters too, which is strange. I've always had... Are you hearing something? Because don't... Yeah, I just out. heard something from the closet. Jesus. All right. Yeah, I just heard something from the closet. Do you know it's what fine. it is? <laughs> no idea. No idea. It's fine. As my door slams shut. I have, like, shut. wicked goosebumps right now. Um, the Atlantis <laughs> thing, though, like, um, like the drowning thing, I'm, I'm afraid of natural disasters, uh, which is why I don't want to ever live next to the ocean again. Even when I was a producer, like, living in L.A., I, I didn't like it, I'm mean, going to be honest. And you could feel a lot of earthquakes that happened in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And, like, we had penthouses and, um, you know, beautiful homes on top floors of different locations where we'd stay. And I hated it because the whole building would sway. Mm -hmm. And I really think that it's that, like, that trauma from, like, the past life connection of, like, if it was a tsunami that hit from an earthquake or whatever. Um, same with Colorado. Like, I... Uh, Colorado, there's more tornadoes that happen on the eastern side of Colorado. I grew up on uh, the western side, which is like more by Denver. But you still, once in a while, they'll get a tornado. And once in a while, you'll get tornado warnings. And um, I've never been, I've been in a tornado, but it wasn't that bad. It wasn't a bad one, if that makes sense. It wasn't like one that like did destruction like you see in Kansas or like Missouri. But um, the sirens would go off, and then the police start r driving the streets to warn everyone, like, get in the basement, you know, close the doors, whatever. And I would just lose my mind. I lose my mind. Like, you don't want to be in a natural disaster with me. And it's crazy because I'm, I'm like, I'm very, like, together. Like, my life, you know, like, I'm, I don't have a lot of fears in my life. But for some reason, not, and I, I really think that's contributed to the past life thing. Yeah, she really helped me one day when we had a tornado warning in Hampshire. <laughs> I was like, was like get, get away get from the, the windows, get in the bathtub, pull the mattress <laughs> over your head from the bathtub. Um, so and then I was, she's like, I have like figurines on the window seal. I was like, so move the figurines and get your yarn and go sit in the bathtub, cat. <laughs> this isn't a thing in New Hampshire. I don't know how to tornado, okay? Like, uh. I don't know. I don't know how my just... mother grew up in Kansas and Missouri because they had tornadoes all the time. Oh, my God. 
I yeah, wouldn't be able to function different. mentally. I would just shut down. Like, not going to happen. <laughs> just pass out. Just or, pass out. Well, my other families from Oklahoma, they get really bad ones. Like, oh, my. No. No. I can't do it. Um, so, but, yeah. So, I, I do. I think it's contributed. Do you think you know something you died from in a past life? Um, yes. Yes. And it's a really weird, like, fear that I've carried into this life, which I don't really have <laughs> any reason said. for it. I think you know. I think I've told you. Mm -hmm. I don't like walking up the stairs and people walking up behind me. Mm -hmm. And I've had... Do you think you were murdered? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure I had a dream that confirmed that mm -hmm. um, from a past life. And I've carried that trauma into <laughs> this life. <laughs> and I don't do stairwells. If we're in... We're together on the stairwell i'm gonna let you walk front okay and i will walk by myself it's just it's fine <laughs> no so yeah i was very strange very very strange but i do i'm over it now but when i was a kid i used to have a huge fear of heights mm -hmm. and with a recent dream that i had i would understand why that was too mm -hmm. um so there's very just when you open yourself up to the possibility of past lives, especially like on the, that spiritual path, kind of like going back to the person that messaged you, mm -hmm. um, it, it's like in paranormal, you know, when you open that door, you're going to have things happen. When you open the door and ask yourself questions without fear um, and just genuinely wanting to know or get answers or closure from something you felt like you're carrying into this life from a past life, you're going to have that come forward you know mm -hmm. um and it comes with just chatting with your guides and putting up boundaries when you feel like you need to and just continually working on yourself well it's and true it's, i yeah, think that you, you have to put a lot of uh a lot of faith in your guides like and you, you know it's it's hard because i don't and like you know religious based people ask me all the time like are you religious like what do you believe in i can't really like i don't i, I will say this i don't believe in organized religion i don't um, and, and I like some things that there's, you know, I think everybody needs to like look into different things, decide what yeah. works for you, what doesn't work for you. There's no right or wrong answer. Part of the reason I don't like organized religion is because I think it pushes it down people's throats. And I don't think that you should be forced to believe everything just because all of this is under the umbrella of Catholicism. But see, that's what's crazy because you look at Catholic <laughs> cats like, don't trigger me. <laughs> Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Because I am PTSD, okay? Um, a long no, childhood. <laughs> but, um, well, like, with Catholicism, it's one of the only true, like, religions that, like, talks about, you know, exorcisms, which is demonic activity. So, okay, I, I, I agree with that part. But then, like, Catholicism is, like, you know, you can't get on birth control and you can't, like, be in control of your own body. Okay, well, I don't believe that. So I can't I can't follow Catholicism. You know what I mean? So like, that's why I'm saying, like, you need, I, and I love the archangels, which is also Catholic side of things. Mm -hmm. So I take the things that I, I truly believe in, like, in my own heart and, like, what I think I've believed and lived, and that's how I, I create what I believe in. But I don't ever force people to believe or think what they need to believe. I think that part of the reason this planet is so young is that there's so many people that, used to at least follow organized religion um you know I, I can't tell you how many dms and messages i get still to this day of people being like oh you believe in paranormal oh you hunt ghosts you're going to hell you're going to hell you bought a one-way ticket with satan and i'm like <clears throat> okay, okay linda <laughs> okay karen okay why you gotta be karen you're fine so what yeah my life what no, it, you're judgy. It, no, it's you're true. It, I mean, being judgmental is like you're not supposed to do that with religion and you're doing it. So I feel like you'll One be on the bus with me. <laughs> you'll be on no, the bus exactly. with me. <laughs> so, I mean, is that how you feel about religion, too? Yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> oh, my yes, God. I do. Okay. Used to be a Sunday school teacher. We're not there anymore. Yeah, I know. Okay, that's like a little not... extreme. I think, feel like you flip flopped <clears throat> a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's for another stream but um yeah and no it really is true the dogma is a mess it's a mess it is and, and like and then like the society scared everybody with the whole alien thing and i'm just like oh my god and you know i that's where I, I i do look at it and be like i think that aliens are afraid of us more than we're afraid of them because you know our government makes us afraid of it, thinking outside the box and it's just, and then when you do think outside the box you're crazy I almost wonder if they're sometimes checking up to make sure we're still alive. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> you okay, bitch? <laughs> we're just like, 
we're making sure you're okay. Because they just, tell their know, friends, hey, I'm making a trip to Earth today. And they're like, ugh, ugh. God bless. Let me know okay, how it goes. <laughs> Be safe. Lock your doors, okay? I'm just saying. Oh, good lord. I'm sitting here yeah. like, look, I know, okay? I shouldn't have come to this shithole again. What was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> we know what happened there um so i've actually found it really interesting if i can go back to atlantis for a minute mm -hmm. um back in the notes mm -hmm. there um is some theories there are some theories about atlantis and what it might have been who corrected or... me orcas or killer whales okay sit down sassy pants plant daddy sit down mr <laughs> sassy pants i'm sorry i'm not oh. perfect like you and catholicism anyway carry on cat <laughs> the trauma comes back every time that the word is spoken okay um but i found it really interesting some of the theories about where folks thought that atlantis might have been uh-huh i'm trying to code uh plato's writings yes and one of them thinks uh believes that atlantis was actually swallowed by the bermuda triangle right i've, I've heard that theory I think you said that you think it's there. Right well, now. I don't know. Okay, no. I, okay, Bermuda Triangle is like phew, southwest. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. well, I mean, from that, it would be, it would be east, southeast of where it was supposed to be. Um, I, so my theory is I think that, you know, like, I, I believe in the Bermuda Triangle. I don't think it's down by Bermuda where, where all the other, like, planes and ships disappear. However, I think that sometimes when tsunamis happen or when planes and ships do go missing, I think it's something similar to a Bermuda Triangle. Um, just like there's one in, uh, what is it, Alaska, the Alaskan Triangle. We've talked about that before. Oh, so yeah. I, I think they're portals is what I think they are. And I mean, although like, you know, people go missing, ships, entire ships go missing, entire planes go missing. It's even worse at the Alaskan Triangle, might I add. But I think that it's like a portal. I think a portal opens up and you go into somewhere else. And it's, I don't know why or where, but it's got to be, you know, like, I, we really don't know what's going on in this planet. Like, they claim they know, like, okay, there's like the, the, the manta, what, I don't even know. Like, I'm not going to use the right terms because I don't have it in front of me, but all the different layers of the planet Earth. And then there's like a core in the middle. Do we really know that? Who's been down there to say they know that? You know what I mean? Like, we don't know. Crust, you know, from right. space. So, right. Well, yeah. and, I mean, we are on a floating rock in outer space. You're telling me that some something weird can't go on, like a another Bermuda Triangle opening up. So, yeah, I do think that is... is the, I mean, there's also theories where um, there's Atlanteans that do still exist that didn't die, and they basically went underground and created, like, an underground colony. It's claimed that the entrances to this underground area where Atlanteans live are large, uh, famous monuments, including um, Stonehenge is one. There's an entrance there, supposedly. There's an entrance somewhere up in the, the North Pole or Greenland or something. Or maybe it's Iceland because of Icelandic lore. And then there's also entrances from the pyramids, they claim. Because once again, remember, Atlantis and Egypt work together. Supposedly with this theory is that there's an internal sun inside of the planet. I don't know if it's underwater and I haven't been there lately. Okay, so I can't tell you what it's like or if it exists. I don't know how I how I feel about it. I But I do, I will say that I feel like if at this point anything could, anything could exist. You know what I mean? Like... We don't really know what's underground with water. The you know we can only go so far into the ocean. We don't really know what's down there. You know. That's true. That's true. I also found it interesting going off of um, the Alaska Triangle. Oh Maybe man, that one's bad. Before. That one's uh, worse than Bermuda, but people don't know it, and I don't know why. Which would make more sense as to maybe something weird going on over there. Well, they say that there's there is alien people whatever you want to call it maybe the bad ones reptilians whatever illuminati i don't know i don't i don't take record okay i'm, I'm a lyran and i'm tired i don't know but they're there supposedly underground helping our military and they're saying because there's like extra technology up there in alaska because it's obviously densely populated that that's why this bermuda triangle in alaska has been created and then sh like planes ships things yetis everything goes missing now the creepy the CIA, was it the CIA, the Black, Black Vault? 
The Black Vault, yeah. Because that was when we were reading about how in, like, 1979, don't quote me on the year, these people went on, like, a hike in the Alaskan Triangle, and literally in the middle of the forest, they found, like, dead orcas and dead bears and dead cougars, and it was in, like, a perfect circle. And it was literally, like, miles in from where, like, the ocean was. And they were like, how the hell are dead orcas in the middle of nowhere in a perfect circle? The only thing that could have dropped them off was, like, you know, a UFO or whatever. I don't know. I don't... We don't know. I mean, I once again, going back to aliens, there's probably good and bad. There's good and bad humans. Why wouldn't there be good and bad aliens? But I feel That's like... That, but everybody's so focused on it just being, like, dark and bad. And I, that I don't agree with. Society nowadays, everything's evil. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. The um, other one that they had that was interesting is they actually thought that Atlantis was Antarctica. Yes, I've seen that, too. Very interesting and then there was another theory that atlantis was possibly the retelling of the black sea flood mm-hmm. like in history i don't know how i feel about that well because it was referenced with plato mm-hmm. and plato says that he went there i think once or something or twice or whatever to me that says like back in the day they would have only been able to get around via like camel horse and boat so he couldn't have been far, or, or Atlantis couldn't have been far from where Plato was, like, as a Greek philosopher. So it had to be somewhere in that area. And then Atlantis, obviously, it's been, it's been tracked with Egyptian documentation. So it had to be in that vicinity. It had to be over there. But I'm telling you that one documentary where they found it in the Sahara Desert, and then they went there, and, like, it was amazing. Like, that ha- I need. I don't even remember what the documentary was called. It's on Gaia. Um, it was under like some Atlantis tile, so it, it won't be hard to find. But um, I think it was like exploring the real Atlantis or something like that. But like it was amazing to see, and like there because it was rubble that was left, obviously, but it was still in the perfect circles which Plato had drawn. Mm, mm-hmm. And it was like real. It was huge. It wasn't little. I'm not like don't think it was like this little teeny town. Like if it was islands, like it was spread out. Um, and then there was another thing. They, they literally took Plato's writings word for word, and, like, they were looking for the imagery of, like, where Atlantis was. And he even talked about, Plato talked about some cliff or something. And, you know, when Plato did his writings, he was very specific with, like, mathematics. And they went and, like, measured the mathematics of this certain cliff that he said, you look at the sun to the east at this time, whatever, and there was the cliff was still there. But it was, like, northern, like, lifted of the Sahara. So it was just, it was so accurate. And I, like I said, the, the locals there are gathering artifacts. And there were artifacts from the Atlanteans that they had in there. It was things that were, like, metals that were melted down, like, back, in, you know, obviously it's thousands of years old. Um, a lot of things made from crystals and ivory that they had found. Um, but they don't know how to excavate properly. Because, once again, we're talking about a second to third world countries i think it's over the span of like two they had to fly into one country because that was the only area that had like a a landing strip for like the plane to go into and then from there they had to like take a four-hour car ride into a different country i mean it was like i'd love to go there but i don't i mean it's so comp it's a complicated thing because of where it's located at But to me, it was the most realistic thing that made sense rather than like, oh, they're underground, like with the mermaids and like floating Mm -hmm. around. And you're like, come on, dude, like it's got to be somewhere. There's already natural disasters that we see all over the place, including like with Japan and Indonesia, um, you know, with tsunamis. The big one they're talking about hitting California at some point. Like it had to have been something. Let's not like turn it into a story tale like some people have made it into this fairy tale thing. You know what I mean? It's true. It's interesting here. I think I think Elfie put this in here actually. It's called the Minoan eruption. Mm-hmm. It was a volcanic eruption that destroyed Aegean, um, probably island. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, don't shoot me. Um, the eruption was mentioned in ancient Egyptian writing mm. and affected the weather and crops as far as China. Mm-hmm. And the volcano erupted four times the amount of. Krakatoa, Krakatoa in 1883, mm-hmm. um, and that was back in 1600 BCE. So that's interesting. I just love the correlation between Atlantis and ancient Egypt. Mm-hmm. It's so interesting how they kind of entangled themselves in early history. 
Well, it was Pretty known sure. for people from Atlantis working with people from Egypt and vice versa. And that's where you and I have actually talked about this, thinking like maybe we were friends at that point or like had incarnated where I was with Atlantis and you were with Egypt. Because wow. we've had I mean, like a lot of past lives together for sure. It's true. And if you think about Atlantans or Atlanteans being so architecturally sound mm -hmm. and the ancient Egyptians with their astrology and their energy and like, you know, whatever the else that they were doing, mash that together mm -hmm. and the pyramids are built. Mm -hmm. There are no coincidences, people. No. There are no coincidences. And well, see, and it was, wild. but it's interesting because you have like the Egypt, Egyptian that like, obviously, um, you know, they give out to, um, the sphinx cat or just cats in general and then like mm -hmm. like you talked about with the alligators uh-huh but, but then you have the atlanteans that obviously it was precious metals rare wildlife because i talked about unicorns being involved in elephants for some reason they worshipped elephants and um what did i say metals crystals there was something else i was going to say um oh they had supposedly uh, like the most civilized war warriors and like um, armies and milita and that was what wow. sort of guarded and protected these different layers of the island so there was essentially three to four layers of islands with Atlantis depending on what you believe and what you've read and the most inner island was basically where the quote gods and goddesses would live or like the hierarchy so what you would probably consider like Zeus as the gods and goddesses of Atlantis in the center and then the next layer was like the regular people and then the next layer was like the poor people or the middle class and then the most outer layer was protected by the military and then there were little canals that went inside to get to each of the islands and then they had like the merchants area and all that stuff um, and they explained that in this documentary and once again they were going off of physical proof that's been found and they're trying to debunk it in a way to where it's not this like crazy stories that we've heard of, of what could Atlantis be or where could it be they were trying to really turn it into something because there was something you said to me Kat not too long ago it was a couple months ago you were like isn't it interesting in our history like of planet earth that people will say, oh, there's myths and legends of A, B, C, or D, and all of a sudden they get all of this information, and suddenly no, it's no longer a myth anymore. It's no longer a legend. It's real because there's been concrete evidence found on it. Yep. It's true. It's very true. And it's in those high, it, you know, and you find also as well when you find that information that the areas that it was found is highly restricted. Mm hmm think about you know all of the alien stuff that we deal with and what the government hides even though they're kind of loosening and loosening up on it now mm -hmm. um ancient egypt there are some major like milita militia like areas where you cannot even go near like, no i guess and still you can't even get in yeah and there's and theories behind it one obviously you're talking about egyptian artifacts so obviously they're going to have it heavily guarded yeah. but mm -hmm. now on the atlantean side what's so interesting about that is they claim that part partially why there's a mil militia around like guarding these certain areas is because that is the entrance into the underground area into where atlanteans live that's a theory. That's a theory. Obviously, I don't know if that's yep. true or not. Now, somebody had said in one of these documentaries, because this is just a theory, um, yeah, yeah. they were like, so what do you do if you find the entrance and, like, you get past the guards and go down there? Well, the the theory is is that not only do we have the human guards from planet Earth, but they have the Atlantean guards underground or wherever it is on that side. If you get through our guys, guards, fine. You're not going to get through theirs. They're going to kill you. They basically don't want anything to do with humans above land because they see that we're destroying the planet. And then there's other theories where they say that there's some that have come up to help help the planet um, and help take care of the planet. They say that they're in tune with all of the sea creatures and the sea creatures are trying to helps it, 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 it that's a deep theory like you can go down a real deep rabbit hole with that but that's because they yeah. say atlanteans are so connected uh telepathically is that like tele mm -hmm. telepathically to the to the sea yeah. creatures and sea animals mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's really interesting it's really interesting for sure there's even a theory not to go down the bible belt but with Moses <laughs> that's the just ark. the way you said that <laughs> okay. i'm dead I'm gonna get that out of the way. um but with noah's ark uh, they believe that they have found the Ark 
on the top of a mountain. Is this the one that's in like Sweden or something or like it's Eastern? Yeah. No, no, it's Turkey or something weird, isn't it? It's something weird, yeah. And it has the exact dimensions written in the book. Mm -hmm. And nobody's allowed to even go near it. And I get it, like historically. But there's like I saw a documentary. They were trying to get pr- approvals to go in and excavate, and they didn't. They didn't no, trust no. Americans. So then they sent in the UK to try to go help excavate, and they were like, "No, you can't go in." Yeah, you like, literally can't go serious. in. But there's a different energy with it, and I feel like as light workers, like we know it's beyond it just being a historical artifact. Like there's an energy of why they're standing there with guns to make sure nobody goes goes near it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like some of it too is just like knowledge that we also might not be ready for you mean like misinterpreted text ancient texts and where the that bible too. was misinterpreted and so now yep. for the last few thousand years women had had to walk behind men because the bible said so because it was misinterpreted yep mm. got it right got so it right. especially with right. especially with middle eastern um cultures right because women are mm-hmm. definitely much more uh what's the polite word of saying it um submissive submissive i mean forcefully due to culture and religion so they right. wouldn't want right. the truth coming out regarding like but once again which version of the bible are you talking about there's literally been so many versions of it so many religions of it so many interpretations of it and it's like it's amazing that and that tells you how young this planet is mm-hmm. that tells you how young this planet is because they take a book that was written by someone we don't know and then, and then they turn around and kill said person that they're worshiping, a.k.a. Jesus, homeboy Jesus. Supposedly they're going to worship him, then they put him on a cross and kill him. And it's like, y'all are savages. You know what I mean? Yep. But then you're going to worship him. Then you're going to say paganism and witchcraft is bad, yet you're drinking the blood of Jesus. Which is Literally it, Linda? <laughs> Which is it? Linda and Karen are best friends, okay? Jesus. They need to kill. It's interesting, though, because... When you think about, like, ancient knowledge, right? Like, with the church, it's the Bible, the Quran, brother religions, all of that. With Atlanteans, though, it's claimed that they put all of their knowledge in Lemurian crystals. Yes. I'm obsessed with I have so many Lemurian crystals. And it's really interesting from what I've been able to find. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. um, There's only a, a specific area where you can find Lemurian crystals. And I don't think that is any small thing to you know turn the other cheek with well they're they're really hard to mine for sure they're hard to mine but it is it is interesting because you look at but that doesn't that tell you doesn't that speak volumes that it's definitely probably uh gods and goddesses from the sky oh yeah because what what other religion have you ever heard of on planet earth saying no we worship through crystals and energy yeah. I mean, that was just an Atlantean thing, which is why I've adopted it so much because I believe in it and I love it. I mean, you have ad- ad- adopted the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, angel, angel stones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I agree. They always put their energy into the crystals and I, I really think that that was uh, outer earthly. Is that a good way to put it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't shock me if they had an area of, you know, putting their knowledge in it and when destruction happened smashed and went everywhere Mm -hmm. um type of scenario Mm -hmm. you know i 100 percent believe it i believe it i do it's fascinating to me that's why i and lumeria the lumeria is just amazing like it's just that's the drive behind atlantean stuff and uh well and like it also makes you wonder where did the precious metals come from where did the certain crystals come from don't you think that if the gods and goddesses were preyed upon and they came back down to earth that's where they brought them from i mean i'm not saying i'm not gonna get too conspiracy theory out there because i could really go with this just because it fascinates me so much but now this is let's go back to the um the question for in my dm of like spirituality and how do you get on this track this is how you get on this track you get inter- You find something that calls to you, that like speaks to your soul. For me, it's Lumeria, obviously, in Atlantis, and for Cat, it's Egypt. And then you start opening your 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 mind to like learning about it. And then when you start really vibing with it and understanding, like I think I was connected to this in a serious past life in a serious way. Then it, you just start like the doors of spirituality and like learning your way through it will start opening. Um, but you have to have faith in your guides and your spirit team, which I believe we we all have guides and spirit teams on the other side. I think it could be anywhere from five to ten people. I probably have twenty people keeping me in check every day, and they're just like, "Oh, did you see what Crystal did again? Jeez, <laughs> like literally." Um, Mine are probably the same. Oh my god. Uh, well, 
they're making well, sure you're on the right track, but you have to have kind of like, you, you know, like faith that they're, they're going to help you on that track. So when we started doing this research together, she went on a, this is years ago, like two or three years ago, Kat went on a tangent. I mean, she, we'd already done our own stuff. So me for Atlantis, Kat with Egypt. And then we started learning about star seeds. Oh, yes. And this we, <laughs> it is and and like so this and you know if if this stuff like when you learn about this stuff or you like start start learning about spirituality like obviously where my path started was like paranormal just like i'm at the point now with with paranormal and experiencing the other side like you guys just heard my door slam shut like literally i didn't nobody's in here you know what i mean nobody's i'm in my studio it is soundproof in here like there's no doors there's nothing happening um and my crew is, is, you know, modding in the other room, but they know not to slam doors while I'm live. So that wouldn't have happened. Um, so my point is, is just like you, I, I have accepted that the other side exists, period. I've accepted that this is not where we're from, especially like when you have family and friends, Harley, my dog passed away, like he visits me and I know it. Um, so you have to start there, first of all, just accepting that the other side exists. I'm not telling you what to accept. I'm telling you to do your own re research and figure out what resonates with you. But when Kat and I started doing the research with Atlantis and I was just like, dude, this is it. Like, I just know I'm Atlantean. Like, that was my, like, past life. And then Kat's like, yep, me Egyptian. We start learning about something called star seeds. Now, I'm not going to go down a train with star seeds because there's so many. Essentially... What what a star seed is is somebody that is uh, you've you've in, you've incarnated on this planet. Um, star seeds are usually old souls, old beings, and you've come to like change the planet somehow, or like help society, or help help the creation of the community or the culture or wherever you're at. There's different types of star seeds because technically we're if you want to get technical, we're all aliens because none of us are really from here, right? Like, especially if you believe in ghosts, you believe in the other side, you know, your mother crossed over and you've had experiences with her energy when she's come to visit you, even if it's in your dreams or in your house, you know, she's somewhere else. You know that you will go be with her someday. That's where we are from. Um, I don't know if everybody's a star seed. It depends on if you think you're an old soul or if you're a new soul. It, it really just depends or a new earth soul. Um, I have met both. Uh, star seeds are different um, beings that are basically what your soul's origination is from. Um, and I think a majority of the planet is probably, um, what's the what's the P one? Palladian. Palladian. Mm -hmm. A lot mm -hmm. of people that are Palladians will incarnate on this planet to help the vibration. Palladians are known for being very positive people, good people. They don't like... Uh, the horrible dark things that take place on the planet because like I've said I feel like hell could exist here because people torture animals and other beings every single day that we hear about on the news and so light star seeds are known for coming in to help um, help elevate the planet in a way and um, star seeds are known for being connected to Egypt and Atlantis as well what's another big one Arcutarians are really smart yeah. with big brains if you're curious about it you're gonna have to do your own research on it and and Kat and I'll talk about what we are but I don't want anyone to like just say you're like us because like you're fans of us you need to like really find out what resonates with you so mm -hmm. we believe that we are Lyrans which are one of the oldest star seeds in the universe mm -hmm. and um, they're from a star constellation called Lyra um, which is in another constellation called Vega and um, the it was like destroyed of origination it's very interesting stuff Lyrans are, are lions um, they look like half cat beings sort of things you have to look into like what the personality traits are and if it even resonates with you and if it doesn't that's okay too you don't have to be one just because there's different star seas or different beings um, it, it, you, you'll have to, and that's part of the journey though. It's like, I don't think you should skip ahead. I think that no. if you're wanting to do like the spiritual ascension journey, um, and don't think you're going to automatically get into like astral projection too, or, um, past life regression. Cause that's not, that's going to be one of the last steps. Like you, you're like, once again, I don't think your guides are going to allow that to just happen because you're like, Oh, you know what? I want to find out about my like past life guides. I'm ready to have that experience. Cause those can be traumatic. 
it takes a while. It takes a minute. Mm -hmm. and you have to break yourself for it because it kind of messes your reality up a little bit. It does. Just It, do it really does. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why having a, a strong core spiritual belief is important because and relying on your guides to lean on them when you need them as well. Mm -hmm. um, that would be really difficult to go through on your own. And I don't even think it could be achieved on your own. I really do think you need the help of your guides. Or I agree. Yeah. You. Oh, yeah. Well, and you and I had both gone through Ascension sort of at the same time. So I, we had like actual help together on this planet, which I think also made it easier. But it is when you start getting super into this stuff like that we've been talking about, um, it changes your reality a lot. And you start looking at things a lot differently in different perspectives like that comes also with shadow work, which is something I've talked about before. Um, but you have to really make sure that you're prepared for it because... Um, I don't look at the planet the same anymore, personally. Um, I don't, I, I can't, how, can you describe how we view things? Because we view things pretty similar. You think of, like, planes, right? Like, earthly planes, spiritual plane, all of that. I think each plane has a tier mm -hmm. in it. You have, like, lower vibrational tiers, which are, like, the energy vampires, you know, people that just don't have good vibes. Mm -hmm. Then you have the spiritually, uh, I can't talk today, spiritually woke uh, person that starts to open their mind to the possibilities of these things. Mm -hmm. Then you have the person that's starting to become aligned, um, living their authentic truth, growing more. Then you have ascension period where lots of uh past scenarios that you're learning to heal like shadow work is part of ascension as well um which we've talked about before mm -hmm. um and then you have like the super super high realm which is your spirit guides and guardian angels which we never really reach because we're not that mm -hmm. um but usually within like just as an example this isn't a real thing but i'm just trying to like explain it usually within like the fifth or sixth tier when you get there is kind of when you start to open up like the possibility of akashic records past life regressions, um, things like that, because you've really been working on yourself to be able to uh, accept those things that did happen. Mm -hmm. um, and it helps heal you in this life, mm -hmm. um, especially when it comes to past life stuff. But um, it's really, it can be a really dark rabbit hole. It can mm -hmm. be a really dark rabbit hole. And when it happens to you, it's really shocking because your whole I almost like to view it as like the color of your world changes, mm -hmm. meaning like the veil is almost lifted and you're seeing interactions with others, emotions, um, scenarios in a completely different energy. Than you lose a lot of people in your life. And not it's only true. do they not want to be in communication with you anymore because they don't align with your beliefs and what you're thinking, but you also now are considering a lot of people lower vibrational. I'm not saying that makes people better or worse than you. I'm not saying because Kat and I had our ascension together that we're better than other people. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We just chose when we went on our ascension to, and it happened to be together, which was a great support system. But um, when other people are, are not ascending to you, you look at things differently, like trivial. Um, well, you know what a good word is for it? Hmm. Dimension. The, how they talk about the ascension right now and how we're moving from 3D into 5D mm -hmm. is another great example. Different dimensions um, of, the, of people, of human, mankind. Different energy and everything. And that doesn't mean that we still don't have human experiences when we're growing because the growing never stops. The, the lessons never stop. Mm -hmm. we, we're constantly an ever-evolving spiritual being having a human experience. But when you reach those certain levels of dimensions and you're opening yourself up to Akashic records and past life stuff, um, it really makes you almost like pause time. Patience and tolerance and, comes to mind. Don't you think those are good words? Yes, it does. It slows down with scenarios like, um, let's say there's like a parent that you get triggered by, mm -hmm. by something they say all the time. When you are in a different kind of dimension or ascension, and if you want to put it that way, you can look at them having that same conversation with you that triggered you in 3D and literally be able to just look at them as if time has slowed down and react from a, I think almost like compassionate way. Mm -hmm. You really do because you have an understanding that they are in a different plane than you are. And that's not to be better than anybody. 
it just the energy is different. That's the okay. Okay, let's do that. Let's give a couple examples. I'll give a I'll give an example, and then you give another example. Okay. I was in the car the other day with somebody, and we were at a fast food restaurant, and um, it was like it's like ninety degrees out in Vegas. It's really hot. There's fans blowing on the like outside workers. They're wearing masks. Um, we're right by a highway, so it's really loud. I'm not driving. I'm in the passenger seat, and the, uh, the person has put in our order two or three times to um, an actual person standing outside taking the order. Well, the person can't hear the order because the highway and like the fans. The person that I'm in the car with driving is extremely angry because he's had to re give the order over and over and over again. And I'm like, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Like, just you know, they can't hear. They're kids. They're in high school. You know what I mean? So we get back up to like the next area where now we pay and then we're going to get the food because like a huge long, they, they do things differently in Vegas. That's all I'm going to say because um, there's a lot of people. Vegas. Yeah, it's yeah. just Vegas. And so we get to go pay and they spurt back our order and it's still not right. So now it's the fourth time. Now a normal person would be triggered and be like, God, like I've given you my order four times. It's still not right. And that's what happened to the person I was in the car with. They're like really angry and they're like this and they're mad. And I'm just sitting there like are you okay? Because it's like not that big of a deal. Like they're just kids that are doing their job, probably getting paid eight or $9 an hour to stand out in 90 degree heat. There's fans growing. They have to breathe in a mask and it's still 90 degrees. Like, are you, you can be, I actually said verbatim, you can have some compassion. So the point of that is the, of the example is when you're ascending that attitude towards somebody that's a essential worker, when you know they can't help it for whatever reason you have no reason to get that violently angry like that's you're saving your energy for something that's important because you learn that in ascension that you don't want to you don't want to give your energy away for free energy is expensive and i'm going to hold on to my energy for when and why i need it so you don't expunge your energy on dumb things and unfortunately part of planet earth is that people are going to screw up We've all screwed up. So there's an example for ascension is that you look at other low level people, low vibrational people. Sorry, I don't want to word that incorrectly. And that's because they haven't gone through ascension. It's true. So, you, so you, you get separated, right? Like, I mean, so you look at scenarios differently because you're like, look, yeah, it's frustrating to have to repeat your order five or six times. But like you're looking at compassion for the kids that are working. Because you're like, well, they're grateful that they have a job. We're still in a pandemic. They're wearing a mask outside in 90 degree heat. They can't hear past the highway and the fans. It's okay. Just tell them what, what needs to be fixed. Instead of getting angry and like beating your hand on the steering wheel. You know what I mean? Like I don't have that kind of energy to expert anymore. Is that a good example? That's a really good example. You look at conflict differently. Mm -hmm. And that's still not to say that we still don't have human experiences and have our moments. You know, we will. But nine times out of 10, it's from a different energy of having the understanding of I'm going to save my energy and that's it. It's a consciousness it's level up. Don't you think that's a good way to put it? It's true. We, we also say too, it's like when someone makes us mad, we write out a paragraph of what we want to say and then delete it and just say, okay. In a text message. Yeah. Rather than yep. word vomit. Like, you know, when you get really, like somebody says something stupid to you in text and you're just like, I'm going to tell you everything I think. Well, Ascension is deleting the whole paragraph and responding with, okay. In other words, I don't need to be right. You can think what you need to feel. I'm, I'm saving my energy for something else. So that's part of Ascension. And that's hard because when you're on this plane of existence with Earth, things can be frustrating. Work can be frustrating. A pandemic can be frustrating. Having family members die from COVID can be frustrating. Like, so I'm not saying there isn't things that happen that, that can be hard and, and detrimental, but I do think that everything that's put in your path is part of ascension and a part of learning. And it really is up to each human being to be in control of their path and how far they want to take it. Nobody mm -hmm. says there's a, a, a right or a wrong way. And that's why I don't like people that get in my DMs that are like, oh, you, you believe in ghosts, you're going to hell. And I'm just like, oh, my God, this person's so that's low vibrational to me that and I and I, you know, there was a time in the past when I was first on YouTube like seven years ago where that would have triggered me. But now I have ascended and I don't have the energy to write back and respond. Instead, I will mute and block you. I have people that want to talk smack to me on Twitter most of the time, I just mute them. I'm like, oh, I want you to watch my stuff because clearly my, my angel triggers your demon. So continue to watch my stuff and maybe you'll have your ascension at some point. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> one can only hope. <laughs> Cat's like, Jesus. And it's fine. But it is. It's an energy. And that that journey can be hard, but it really is a beautiful journey. So definitely enjoy the ride. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a ride. Yeah, but someone asking me how to go on that journey, I can't tell you. You yeah. have to figure out the journey. There's no right or wrong way to ascend, to not ascend. There's no right or wrong. There's, you don't believe in past lives? Fine. That's not wrong either. Maybe you were you wrote in your path to come here to not believe in past lives. That's fine. You wrote in to be an atheist agnostic? Fine. That was what you wrote in. There's no right or wrong answer. I'm not here to argue with people. Some people even are like, oh, don't you get frustrated, Crystal? Like, you have all this evidence of paranormal and, like, all these cool experiences. And, like, then you have the skeptics that don't believe you. I'm not here to prove a skeptic. I don't care. If he wants to believe, he can believe. If he doesn't, he doesn't. I don't care. That's your path, not mine. I'm not here to try to convince you otherwise. All I know is I'm here to live my authentic life, and it just happens to be in the public eye. <laughs> it just happens to be, you know? You know, the spiritual path is unique for everybody, mm -hmm. and that's what makes it so special. So it doesn't matter if you're 40 or 50 and just starting your path. There is no time limit to when you need to start your journey. It's mm -hmm. when you're ready. Mm -hmm. um, no pressure. It just is what it is. And sometimes if you're feeling like you're ready, but not really too sure where to start, talk to your guides. Mm -hmm. Let them know that you're ready to start and you'd like a sign as to where to go first. And mm -hmm. you will get it if you look for the synchronicities, like mm -hmm. in numbers or anything like that, animals, birds, you know, however that resonates with you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're meant to all be different. Mm -hmm. It'd be boring if we were all the same and had all the same problems. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So enjoy it when you get there mm -hmm. when you get there and it's a process yeah. but you know that's the thing too is i want to make sure i make clear with everybody you know kat and i have experienced our past lives elfie has experienced past lives she will not speak about it publicly i respect her for that she's done so much shadow work she's we call her our, our elder of the group and that's extremely private for her and she doesn't want to share it and i we respect that 100 percent. me and kat on the other hand think that it's exciting information and we like to share it with people because we think people are intrigued by it and interested and we hope that we can encourage others to want to go on that path but remember, like when you're talking about past lives like Kat and I have, this isn't the only past lives we've had and that we've had uh, been able to experience our Akashic records. You don't just do that. You don't just wake up one day and you're like, okay, I haven't done a lot of other work, self-care, self-love, shadow work. I just want to experience my past lives. That's not how it works. Um, you have to really like make sure that you're in a good place with the universe, with your self-care, self-love, making sure you're not surrounded by toxic people. Um, and making sure that your like your soul is ready for ascension, because like Kat said, when you start experiencing Akashic records or past lives, it's deep and it can get dark. I mean, like you're talking about learning about ways that you've died in past lives, yeah. um, and it's not fun. Like I've had to relive several deaths um, through like astral projections because I asked to learn about it. Kat's had the same, and and thank God we have each other because I'll call her and be like, shit, I had a rough night. I got yeah. shot last night. And she's like, what? Well, and, you know, that's what helps, though. And that's why we want to talk about this journey is because when you're starting that, um, it can seem really out of left field where people don't understand or think you're crazy. Oh, they're not going so to. I can tell you 90 percent of people in your life are not going to understand what you're doing. They're going to think you're crazy like at all. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just nice to have people that you know, in your corner or that you watch that have experienced it. And we're here to tell you, you're not crazy, mm -hmm. um, but don't rush it. You mm -hmm. Don't rush it. You know, it's just the society we live in now is so fast paced. We have to have the answers now. We have to do this. We have to do that. We don't have to do shit. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is enjoy the time, the present moment mm -hmm. and do the best that we can every day because it will get overwhelming. It will. That's just part of life. This you journey know? is short. So enjoy it while you're here. Yeah. You know, and, and remember, it's it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. And like you guys know, if you've been a fan of Ghost Girl Diaries, the, I've had one hell of a journey myself. And it's crazy because I, I, there's some things that are amazing things that are happening right now that I can't talk about publicly because of contracts. But I will say that in the position that I'm in with my crew, and that's Elfie, Kat, Shaylee, I would not have been prepared for this for all the other contracts that I've had before now. So all of the trials and tribulations you go through in life, at, at the time it seems detrimental. It feels like your life is ending, your world is crumbling, like you've read my book, like how many 
horror stories are in this thing of things that I've gone through, right? Like in my book of Ghost Girl Diaries. Um, yeah. And you have to overcome them. And it's weird because at the time that these things are happening, you feel like your world and your life is crumbling. But like two years from now, it's going to make sense why it happened. Sometimes doors have to shut for other ones to open. And sometimes like for me, all the experiences I've had of talking about, uh, you know, having, having a feminist movement and paranormal, I didn't know that was supposed to be my purpose. I didn't know I was going to have the door slammed in my sh- in my face so many times because of male producers and male EPs that didn't like that I was a woman and knew what I was talking about. They want me to go become a porn star and go into OnlyFans just because I'm a, quote, pretty female with makeup on. I didn't know those experiences and those trials were going to lead to where I am now. And it gave me, like, more drive, more force, more fire to be able to be on a platform and represent not just girls in paranormal, but anyone who hasn't had a fair chance with life. And um, understand that, like, you're going to have hard times, but there's a reason for it. You need to find the lesson in the hard times. That's step one with shadow work, is learning that there's lessons in everything, even in the most dark, traumatic traumatic of times. I mean, yeah. you guys haven't even heard my, like, personal story. and Kat has it, too. Like, you know, this was just my relationships. Wait till you hear the rest of my life when I come out with those books. I've had moments where I've been homeless in my life. Mm-hmm. Kat has too. We've both had homeless moments where we've both had nowhere to live and we've been living in our car. So you don't even know half of the story. So wait till the full story comes out. But it's understanding of like you have to keep pushing if you want to make something of yourself no matter what the goal is. And that's really the ultimate part of ascension is understanding that whatever you were put on this earth for is that you have a purpose. We all do. It's true. And while it is a really individual journey um, that no one can take on but ourselves, when you start that healing path and that ascension path and just spiritual path in general, you start to attract those people towards you that are going through similar situations. Might not be the same scenario you're dealing with or what you're healing from, but you do attract those people towards you. So it won't be a journey that you're going to be walking alone Mm -hmm. for sure. And those are the moments to really bask in because, you know, it's like what Crystal said, like, I don't know what I would do without her and with her support when you're going through some of those situations and those dreams or those, you know, records, those Akashic records and things like that. Um, It really is helpful to have a support system um, and therapy if you feel like you want to go to therapy and and deal with that as well on another level, Mm -hmm. you know, regarding mental health, huge advocate for that. So um, it really is. It's an interesting journey. It's Mm -hmm. it's different for everyone, but um, it'll be good. Yeah. Is journaling good for it? It can be like I have a dream journal I keep by my bed. So I have a dream journal. So like if I have a a night where I feel like I had astral projection or I've, I've I have like a very vivid dream I need to remember. I keep it in a dream journal. I have another journal for manifestations. So around the new moon, I have manifestations and the full moon, I have releases of what things no longer serve me, what I need to get rid of. But there's no right or or wrong way to do this. You have to do it on your own. But I will say mine all started with ghost hunting. Mine all started with ghost hunting and I, I, I still to this day get that huge adrenaline rush when I'm in the dark and I'm communicating with something that is not in physical form. And it's an obsession. It became an obsession. And that has led to everything else where where we're at now. I think that's a good spot to end the stream, don't you? I think so. This has been such such a fun stream. Mm -hmm. I love to go off on tangents and give a little little sneak peek into, like, what we chat about all the time on the phone, too. (laughs) You don't want to be there most of the time, okay? (laughs) All the time. (laughs) But it's great. No, it is interesting like more stuff for you guys to you all to go down dark rabbit holes with research is number one and figuring out what works for you what you believe in because like you may not believe in some of the stuff Kat and I've talked about and that's fine you don't have to to each their own yep that's the beauty of choice and life and do you boo absolutely (laughs) do you boo we're we're here to talk about our experiences and what we've been through and take what resonates leave the rest yeah i'm not ready to write that karmatic book of things i've been through that'll be like the last book i write okay (laughs) you don't want to know for years okay she's get through this first her yeah i know we're getting out of a panini oh my gosh jeez we're almost there feels good i mean vegas is almost open at 100 percent capacity you still have to wear your mask and stuff but 
most of the workers in the uh, um, hotels are like 88% to 100% vaccinated. And that's why they're able to open at 100% capacity. So, of course, you know, our state's very libertarian, which I, I appreciate. Not liberal, libertarian. Um, and I believe our system works very well, which I'm very happy with it. So, anyway. Yeah. That's the tea. Make sure you tune in next week. I think we're doing another chat about something else. Yeah. What is it? Lake next? Monsters. Oh, God. Elfie's going to go down a dark hole with we that one. We were already like, doing some talking about it already with Loch Ness. Oh, you know, man. Like Lake Monsters. Yeah, I, I believe in that. There's a there's one in uh, Lake Arrowhead. I think it's Montana. That, that one creeps me out a lot. It creeps me out. Ooh, I haven't heard of that one. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, the water is like crystal clear. Um, so that makes it even more terrifying, I feel like. <laughs> you know what I mean? mean like you don't you can like see, see right it. yeah they have beautiful stones like you can like pick up and stuff because it's so pretty but i'm like mm, i don't want to see it you know what i mean so <laughs> thank you guys so much for tuning in i know i need to get um my uh my chat with shaley up on the podcast i have to edit it and i'm i'm honestly just putting it off I, i'll probably do it this weekend and just like it's gonna oh. be a long edit oh long edit gonna be fine i'm i'm worried to re i'm worried to download all three parts of it and then it's like it cut out and so i'm so i'm gonna have to listen to the whole thing so that's probably partially why i'm like oh god uh poor shaley what an introduction there's like ghosts in the house you know what i mean she just wanted to she just wanted to give her introduction okay like literally um but yeah those will be up for podcasts and um and that's it right this was great yeah i'll have I'll have three weeks of um, healing with my leg. I have another procedure to do next Thursday. Yeah. Ugh, I'm over it already, but it's fine. Almost done. Almost yeah. done. It has to be done so we can film, you know? Like, I got to I gotta wear my shoes for filming, man, you know? Yeah, it's true. I'm holding, right a, I'm holding the long term up of paranormal fashion queen. I can't not be fashionable. It's true. <sighs> it's who I am. Okay. All right, I mean, guys. it's for health, too. It's for health, too. Yeah, right. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Back from the dead.